Using Minecraft and Conquest Reforged, we're going to build the church and house for the mayor of the town of Ascot. Magistrates or mayors of towns in this country are usually selected by the lords in the major cities who visit the areas to collect taxes and make sure the general population are funding the growth of the nobles and the royal families. Normally a lesser out of favour lord is chosen for these roles as the position, although the highest standing within the town, is considered almost to be a punishment removing nuisance lords from court. Occasionally the town magistrate's position is not of the nobility but selected from within the town itself, as is the case with Ascot. The mayor was in fact the stable owner before he was selected to fill the position. He was chosen from the general population for the role because of how effectively he managed the stables which had now been passed on to his younger brother. But mainly the nobility selected him because moving a lord to such a small hamlet of a town seemed far too great a punishment even for the most annoying of fops. Still the mayor of Ascot was grateful for the opportunity and the extra wealth that came with the position. He took full advantage of the town's resources to his own end and despite being a married man would often indulge in the Lone Pine Inn's more risque services with the courtesan. With his newfound position came a pressure to hold on to it as he did not want to be replaced by someone else in the town. To this end he did whatever was in his power to keep the citizens of Ascot not only paying their taxes but also distracted with daily dramas that would have none of them eyeing his job. He had suggested to the farmer's father before his passing to split his inheritance to his daughter, reasoning it was good for the town to keep educated people tied to Ascot. He dismissed the case against the courtesan not only because he used to bed her in his younger days, but having her in the town distracted the farmer's focus. He allowed the fisherman to plant and even keep his ridiculous dead tree standing on the Ascot skyline so that the innkeeper was focused on politely trying to convince the fisherman to remove it. He allowed the courtesan's house to fall into disrepair before stepping in to fix the issue so that the surprisingly intelligent, albeit promiscuous woman would be focused on the farmer. He had allowed a hundred small problems to occupy Ascot with solutions he could step in to fix at any given time to help maintain his position as an even-handed mayor who consistently achieved positive things for the town. A lord from the capital of Ashari would be dropping by soon and he had no doubt that they would see Ascot as a backwater town with petty squabbles that a level-headed magistrate like himself was handling so the lord need not step in. The only puzzle he had not figured yet was a priest whose focus had been shifting from his congregation to the old ruins. He needed the priest to refocus and take care of the town's pious needs or the gentle balance he had created may be threatened. When the priest first moved to Ascot from Castellum, he was young and eager to tend to a flock of his very own and spread the good word of Paradis's teachings. Ascot had been without religious guidance for a while and the Paradis gift, the church in Castellum, had originally funded the church in Ascot's construction. The priest was one of the youngest men to ever hold a parish of his own, even if it was such a tiny little speck of a town. When he arrived at the town, he was pleased the church was in such good repair. Ascot still used it for town meetings, weddings and surprisingly prayer despite being no clergy stationed here. The priest reveled in his role of guiding the town to Paradise's light and loved his God for what he had been gifted. So he gave everything of himself to Ascot and the people loved him for it. They would often come to him seeking advice and he would freely give it, pushing the Paradise ethos to give is to receive. Occasionally though, he would need some moments to himself, so he would walk to the fascinating ruins near the lake, just for some respite and prayer. For some reason he felt far closer to Paradis praying at those ruins than anywhere else. In more recent years however, the priest's influence on the town had waned and he felt it. He felt disconnected from his God despite how much he prayed. He still abided by the Paradis ethos, but it was difficult to give himself to a town full of such petty bickering. He needed to connect with his God again like he had when he was younger, and the surge of strength he felt whenever he reached out. Paradis would surely hear him and give him the strength the priest needed to spread the good word. 
he would head to the ruins again and desperately plea for his god to hear him. Hey, welcome back to Ascot. I hope you guys are enjoying the story so far. There's one more episode to go after this one, so stay tuned for that. But for now, let's go through and have a little walk through of the town to see what we've created today. We've made this beautiful church here. It's a little bit fancier. It's been funded by the very wealthy church in Castellum to try and sort of influence the masses to their faith. In Kalum, there's a fair amount of competition for religion, so there's actually this interesting dynamic where I think a lot of the churches would be a lot nicer than what they otherwise would be because they're trying to basically impress the population and recruit more people. It's come out looking really ornate. I like the little extra detailing on the side here. I think it looks really nice. Down here, the, the Paradis Faith has a couple of little sort of idiosyncrasies to it. One of which is a blessing of fruit. So they believe if, if fruit drops at your feet while you're standing near a tree, it's a blessing. You're supposed to pay a penance if that does occur. You can see we've got a couple of little oranges on the ground fallen from the tree. We did quite a bit of landscaping with this one as well. Ascot is so hilly, it just requires a lot of landscaping. But I do a lot of that off camera because placing layers is really boring. As we can see here, there's like a whole heap of shoes. One of the beliefs for the Paradis Faithful is that every man walks on the same ground. It's sacrilegious to wear shoes inside a Paradis Church. Everybody must take their shoes off and wash their feet before entering. It's not a big church like the one in Castellum, so they'd basically just have like this little station here to uphold that belief. Well, they can walk in here. As we come in, you can see the decorations that we've put inside the church itself. It's come up looking really, really nice. We've got a couple of the little victory mod blocks down here at the end with its different block states and then the wash stand just here. This is the priest's humble abode. This is where he would just have his meals and, and sleep and read, try and throw himself into his religion. He's also trying to get as much information as he can about the ruins that we'll be building in the next episode. If we come through to this room here, we've got our bell tower. Climb up these stairs here, we've got the bell that can be rung. So this might be done for celebrating weddings, notifying of an invading horde, whatever reason they would have like probably a couple of different types of ringing of that bell. Let's go and check out the mayor's house. So we've learnt a little bit in the story about what sort of person the mayor is. Probably a less nice person than pretty much everybody else within the town. The house itself is looks a little bit odd, but I actually love it. It's just like a little bit unique. There's some asymmetry to the build, a little bit of quirkiness, but it still sort of ties in with the other buildings of Ascot using similar design techniques as well. We can go and have a quick look at what's going on with the interiors. I love what we can do with an interior combining Victory Mod and Conquest Reforged. Now this just sort of looks so busy, this little kitchen and eating area. The idea was that the mayor would be having the priest over for dinner to try and communicate to him that he needs to focus on his flock. So that's why they've got such a fine meal laid out and there's heaps of food around. They're prepping for that dinner. Just got a little bedroom here for one of the kids. And as we move up here, we've got an, another kid sort of sleeping in this area here, one of the mayor's kids. We can see the amazing bedding blocks here with Victory Mod as well. As we come out here, we've got a little deck where they're playing the game of Morris and overlooking this valley here where they can sort of see the farmer's fields, much of the copper weed, but it's just a really nice view. The church on the skyline now for Ascot really, really stands out, really draws the eye. If we come over to one of the roads that exits the town, as we turn around and take a look, you can really see that it shows up on the skyline, like it is the focus of the town as it should be. Once the ruins are finished to the left here, this will be a really captivating scene. All right, everybody, that's the end of the episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far through to the video, please throw a comment down below. If you want to guess at what's going to happen with the story, throw that in the comments too. And a like goes a long way for the channel, so if you could drop one of those on, that would be amazing. All right, guys, we'll be back here for the final episode of Ascot soon.